Hey everyone, what's up? Yeah, it's about 2.15. I gotta be at work in about another four hours and 40 minutes, so I'll probably try to get some sleep in. If not, I'm gonna have a lot of caffeine to drink. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, anyway, um, I thought I'd. Well, I, th I thought I'd kind of talk about, well, basically do a double review, double video review on both Sonic Universe 77 and Sonic Boom number 9, formerly known right now as World Unite number 5 and World Unite number 6. And World Unite number 5, I do agree with everybody, with what everybody has said. It's a nice break from the action. Um, you know, you get some good interaction between all the characters, and you do get some funny bits here and there. Uh, you do get more of an explanation about what Sigma is planning to do. I mean, technically, Sigma is planning to go the god route. You know, he wants to be a god of all the worlds he drains energy from. So, it's really unique that it's it's, it's you know so. Uh, it's, it's nice to know exactly what he's planning to do right off the bat. You know, what his main goal is right off the bat. You know, not right off the bat, but kind of know what his main goal is uh, throughout. So it's nice to see that. Um, uh, I, I like how, you know, when, when Sonic confronts both Wily and Egg, Eggman about what they did, turning them into roboticized masters, how after Wiley says yes, but it was complete, but it was we were completely against our will when we did it. You know, uh, we didn't do it of our own accord and, and all that. You kind of see it, Sonic going like uh huh. You know, kind of right off the bat he says uh huh. Kind of by saying that he basically says yeah, I don't buy that for a second. You guys did it on your own free will. So. Yeah, anyway, it's nice to interact. So basically, we, like I said, we get a better idea. And I do like how Mega, Mega Man at first is like, no, you know, he's basically very reluctant to trust Wily because he feels Wily's going to betray them. And, uh, but, you know, you see how, you know, X is kind of desperate and says, look, well, it's not desperate, but basically says, look, we do need every advantage, and I meant it. So, yeah, the, the doctors are on their side for right now. And, uh, again, we do get some good interaction. You know, Styx, of course, provides the comedy. Uh, basically, the whole Spy Brooms deal. You know, you know just typical Styx out of Sonic Boom. And, um, yeah, she kind of has some good bits here. Some nice little funny bits here with, with Sonic, Knuckles, and even Xander Payne, who both the doctors have to uh, escape from Lost Hex, thanks to Xander Payne, uh, teleporting there through his Genesis portal like I, and then teleporting them there to the Sky Patrol, kind of both go like, yeah, Xander Payne's kind of cuckoo in the head. And, you know, I like how he's got some interactions with sticks there and everything, so. But, you know, if that's the last we see of him, then I don't know what the point of him being in the, in the story was, but I don't think that's the last we see of him. And I think he's going to play a little bit of a bigger... I think he's going to have more of a role down the line. I think there's going to be more to him being there uh, than just, you know, than just uh, basically, you know, him waiting for Destiny to call him. And I, I might be wrong about this, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he's the one that's behind the development of the... of the... Um, of the... Ma of the... of the Maverick... of the virus that turned... Uh, the Ma uh, Sigma and a lot of the other Mavericks rode. So, or well, the Maverick virus, as they call it. So, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Um, but, yeah, you have some nice interaction there. Uh, Mega Man, base, between Mega Man and Sonic, and Mega Man wanted to know how the first original meeting went. And, you know, Sonic basically kind of exaggerating a little bit, and even Mega Man calls him out on that. So, that was nice. Uh, I like the interaction between the characters, like, you know, like many people have said, it was, was a good little break uh, between, you know, in this crossover because it's something 
uh, that when you think about it, we really didn't get in worlds, uh, worlds Collide. It was mostly action, 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 action. You know, we never had a good interaction deal. I mean, the interaction with Quake Woman and Nicole was nice. Nicole basically let Quake Woman know, hey, uh, your friends will be there for you no, no matter what, and they're going to help you through it, you know, and help you develop these emotions. So, you know, that was, that was nice to see. Uh, the interaction between uh, Zero and Anton was good, and uh, one thing Mega Beatman basically joked upon is, you know, the how you know Eggman, you know, Anton's like, yeah, you know, it's, you know, Zero, your your sword is more powerful, but it's you know the satisfactory of a real man's sword that that counts. And Mega Beatman kind of joked of how you know Bunny's right there, and she's got this slight this look on her face, like yeah, you know, she knows that from personal experience, but <laughs> if you catch our drift. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's nice interactions. Like, like I said, good interactions. I mean, even, even Eggman and Wily got some interactions, not just with each other, but, but with the other characters, like how Wily's kind of gloating at how Tails is, in, is impressed with how the robot masters are built and what they're made of. It's like, you know, Wily's like, to, you know, Wily's looking at Eggman like, oh, are you jealous? And at first Eggman's saying like, no, and then he's like, okay, maybe a little. Yeah, it's. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to, to see all these. Like I said, it, it, like you know, like Mega Beat Man and others have said, it's a nice little break. Uh, it, you know, right at the beginning of the second act, it's a nice little break uh, in the story to kind of really get the characters to interact and get to know each other better and stuff. And you know, we got to see some elements of what would be in the future, like with Shadow Man's motive as as to siding with Doctor Light. It, it, you know that there. Uh, I, there are there is some comedy around there like when when uh, Sonic and Mega Man are coming down with the uh, food, the lunch if you will, uh, for the meal, the lunch if you will for um, for everybody that Mega Man's kind of surprised at what Sonic has prepared and you know he's like you made chili you know because he's like wait a minute you made chili dogs for everybody? You know because he's questioning Seriously, everybody wants. To, everybody said they wanted chili dogs, and Sonic's like, "Yeah, why not?" You know. So, <laughs> and then there's like a little, um, and then there's a scene, you know, where you know X is trying to contact his two um, uh, navigators back in his time, but can't do it because you know Sigma's abusive time and space uh, did not allow it, it. Did not allow that to happen as much as X was hoping it would. But like I said, during that scene, you kind of have Cream coming up with, you know, the lunch that Sonic has made for his friend, for the human port, for the flesh and blood portion of the crew, of the unified army, as it's called, as it's called at the end of the book, at the end of the issue. And you have Sally grabbing the chili dog and the water, and she's like, uh, and she's got this little comedy bit, bit, and she's got this little bit of a comedy bit there where, you know, kind of like it relay, it's kind of, um, relays off of what, you know, off of Sonic mentioning, you know, hey, what, you know, answering Mega Man's question of, hey, who, you know, who wouldn't want chili dogs, you know, and all that, and you know, you have Sally's, you know, reaction, kind of like relay off that when she, you know, is getting the chili dog, she's like, huh, I knew I should have had Bunny or Antron make lunch. <laughs> basically, like she's regret, because basically she's regretting having Sonic do it because she knew Sonic would go and do that. So <laughs> that's a nice little thing, like you know, it's like. You know, she'll eat it, she'll tolerate it, she doesn't have a problem with it, but it's like, yeah, you know, she should have had somebody else make it because they would have uh, probably given more variety and choice, you know, for people to eat. Um, but yeah, it, it was nice there, and and, and I, I like the little, and I like that, and I like how that scene progressed between Sally and X, and we find out that Sally, in this, uh, in, in these panels, in this one page, is, you know, does agree to have herself, Nicole, Cream, Cheese, and even Cream says Roll will be go cool with it. Uh, to be the navigators in place of, of X's navigators not being there. So, you know, that that was a nice little, you know, like I said, nice little page to see how that came about. How, you know, not having his navigators there kind of worked out because, you know, now he does have navigators with Sally, Nicole, Roll, and Cream. And it kind of does make it a little bit more official, 
you know, because we were always wondering in, in the Sonic comic, you know, are Cream and Cheese officially on the Freedom Fighters? And I kind of look at it like uh, Sally calling them new combatants being, you know, part of it. Yeah, it's officially saying Cream, it, Cream and Cheese are part of the Freedom Fighters. They are on the team. So I, I kind of like that little um, official nod there. But anyway, the, the issue, throughout the issue, you get all these, throughout the interactions, throughout the issue, you get these uh, little panels at the bottom of each page uh, of Sigma, you know, creating as a Genesis portal, uh, working on new Maverick Hunters to serve him, excuse me, as well as, like I said, using Genesis portals to resurrect his old ma uh, Maverick Hunters from the, you know, to, from the pa from uh, previous times and, you know, bring them back, you know, more pop, you know, just as loyal as ever. So, uh, that, that was nice to see. And we do kind of see that he doesn't really have any need for uh, the Zete, the Deadly Six, because he basically calls them fodder. So, I think that's going to come back and bite him because I think in part seven, maybe part eight, we're going to get uh, the characters, uh, we're going to get the Deadly Six at least freed from their uh, cap from the enslavement, mind, the mind control enslavement, enslavement if you will. We're going to probably get them free to where they might even join up with Sigma. We're well, not join up with Sigma, but kind of temporarily call the truth and join up with the unified army against Sigma. So that, that, that'll be interesting to see if it happens. So yeah, the issue ends basically with everybody ready and ready to go got all the information they need, you know, from the meeting that they had at the beginning of the issue uh, to the uh, information that the doctors gave them. And basically how, you know, so and, and again, you know, Sonic does reassure, just in case people don't know, Sonic does reassure Mega Man, hey, don't worry, kid. There's, there's uh, tons of good guys around here. There's, there's tons of eyes from a lot of good guys around here. There's no way these guys can, you know, there's no way Eggman and Wiley can do, can't do you know, can't do anything to stab us in the back without somebody noticing. So, anyway, like I say, the uh, the issue ends with the unified army ready and going right into battle against the uh, against uh, Sigma's forces. Because you know, Sigma's you know Sigma's forces after they discovered the location of of the lost hex and its headquarters. So. Uh, that that's basically how the issue ends, and I thought it was a nice, like I said, a nice little break from majority issue until the end, which leads us, of course, into um, World Unite number six, which is Sonic Boom issue nine, and this is where the action really picks up. You see some uh, great action pieces. Everybody's fighting against everybody. You know, you have the Freedom Fighters fighting against all the robots. You, you have X kind of comment of how. You know, to, I think it was it, it's to zero how all these uh, ro all these reploids that they're fighting, all the reploids they have faced and destroyed in the past, and that Sigma is basically using the Genesis portals to Genesis portals to resurrect and bring them back. So uh, overall, it's mostly a battle issue in the end. Uh, it does focus on sticks. It does focus on sticks. There is some Sonic Boom comedy in it because you have. Uh, comedy chip and Fativius Beaver basically uh, running away, escaping, if you will. So that throws in the Sonic Boom deal comedy. I mean, you have Sticks running away from a mechanical bee before she just turns around and hits it with a with a boomerang and and tries to get the other two to fight as well. But they're like, you know, forget you, we're out of here. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. And it does show uh, Sally, Roll, and Cream, and Nicole kind of doing their job as navigators and stuff, and you know keep you know keeping an eye out for everybody. And Sally, and it does kind of show that Nicole has a lot of control around the the Sky Patrol because she basically tells Sally, "Hey, don't worry, you know I can handle." Because Sally's wondering if you know navigating as well as keeping an eye on the doctors is too much for her. And she's like, no, it's not. It's not that. It's not. You know, it's not hard. 
and yes, I'm able to, and that basically she's fine keeping an eye on the doctors. And the doctors, of course, are not too happy about this because, you know, it pretty much spoils any kind of plans that they have, or at least as far as the Freedom Fighters and the Unified Army is concerned, any plans that the doctors have of either betrayal, usurping, or escaping, or whatever. And yes, the doctors do have a plan to, like they did before with Sigma, try to, you know, get, you know, back to the Lost Hex and take control of the, of the Master Engine so they can become the ones that control all of reality instead of Sigma. And if that doesn't work, at least, you know, Wiley says, hey, if that doesn't work, you know, I did find the escape pods on this ship in case it gets blown out of the sky. Uh, and everything and, and Eggman overall is looking at this like well no matter what happens you know whether we conquer all reality instead of Sigma or we escape or whatever it's that he's gonna have the knowledge of knowing Sonic's gonna owe him one because he's helping Sonic um, uh, in this battle against Sigma so yeah basically the doctors are still kind of up to the old tricks and trying to basically behind the good guys backs try to resume their plans of trying to gain control of the master engine and become the rulers of all reality instead of Sigma and if that doesn't work try to escape and you know try to escape with the intact with their lives intact if you will um, I don't see them <laughs> really conquer I don't see this plan working out either because I think the free I think basically what's going to happen is they're going to try to do one of these one of the, one of these two things and the unified army is going to be ready for them. So <laughs> expect that to, to happen in the long run. The unified army is going to be ready for them or something's going to happen that's going to basically cause them to end up back in the brig again or back in jail again. So um, yeah another tidbit between the doctors is how you know it, Wiley feels the basically that the Unified Army doesn't have any appreciation for the true genius. And Eggman agrees with it. So, uh, yeah, th again, throughout the issue, it's, you know, mostly everybody's fighting everybody, and it seems like they're getting the upper hand. The Deadly Six comes in, uh, finally comes into the picture and gives them a fight, but they're f able to finally get around that. And throughout all this, you know, Styx is like, you know, I guess she's, following suit with Chip, Comedy Chip and Fativius Beaver and trying to hide and Comedy Chip's like, oh hell no, you, you're you just as bad as those uh, those robot masters or whatever those things are. And he closes the door on her and she's like, hey, but what about women and children first and da 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 and she decides, oh well, I guess the next best thing to do is attack and <laughs> she goes after one of the, and she goes try to attack, uh, I think, one of the Zete only to get punched like this by the Zete and basically land straight first into a Z, a, another Genesis portal which opens up to the world of Street Fighter. That's right. She ends up land, she ends up instead of falling into the ground found, like she pretty much feels would have happened she basically says she basically takes a dive into a Genesis portal and like I said ends up in the world of Street Fighter because the first because one of the first people she encounters and who's surprised at her ability to talk is Chung Li. <laughs> yeah, Chung Li is the one that first encounters uh, Styx uh, in this world. So, yeah, so Styx ends up in the Street Fighter world, which of course is going to be continued in the next part, which will be part of my subscription, which will be 274. Uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book, and that's going to be part seven. So anyway, that happens, and you know, every and just when it looks like everybody's got the upper hand, and he finally got the deadly six down for the count. You know, X, X is able to kind of see, look, well not X, but but Zero is able to look into the eyes of the, look at the eyes of the, uh, of the Zete and see that they're being mind controlled by Sigma through the uh, uh, Mavic virus or through the same virus that corrupted him and uh, as X 